Let's see all the breakfast and plus CV Africa time for us to take you through the pages of the National Dailies. As always, we have Chris Nwandu who joins the conversation. And like Kofi would tag him, the tribalized Nigeria. It's good to have you join us this morning, Chris Nwandu. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Messi. And I said, I like your hair. Good morning. Thank you so I, much. I told, I told her yesterday she <laughs> she refused to accept my I did. So, uh, okay. Thank you for, for, for confirming, sir. <laughs> yeah, All right. Thank you so like much, Chris. Well, we'll start off with the Punch newspaper this morning. As always, our attention would be on the top stories. Quite interesting. Uh, you have the subsidy saga. I'd like to say labor fumes as... IMF, that's the International Monetary Fund, wants the federal government against fresh borings. And IMF says Nigeria likely to depend on CBN overdraft to fund the 2.6 trillion naira subsidy. Uh, do away with funds, advise, loans, TUC, NLC tells the federal government because they understand the dynamics. But usually what happens when you go to borrow, you, you just uh, probably become a slave to whoever is lending to you. Uh, away from that electoral act, group defy presidency and holds protests today. And uh, you also have, I have chronic diabetes, but Carrie tells court. Hmm. Arek Bashola's faction, governor's aid disagree as minister groups falls the primaries. Asu tax federal government as renegotiation starts today. And just before we move away, APC shifts convention for third time and fixes March 26th's new date. Kofi, don't you find that interesting? Really? Really? It is. It is. NMPC introduces trans shipping charges and deport owners to raise fuel price. You also have another one saying, my generation should step down, says Osiba. Okay, I beg your pardon. That's uh, former president Olushigono Basanjo. Really, really, because some people would say, I mean, at some point, he almost, uh, all things would have been equal. He probably would have been doing a third term. Uh, bills proposes punishment for corrupt officials, siblings, or the beneficiaries. That's also what you have here. Clearing agents ground ports operation and beginning definite strike over CBN's evaluation. That's what uh, the, the punch captions and South South APC lawmakers endorses Yahaya Bello ahead of 2023. NSCDC arrests six Bennies for smuggling petrol out of Nigeria. Uh, these are the headlines on the punch this morning. Okay, let, let's go straight to the leadership uh, newspaper today uh, with the lead headline. They are saying that um, they were the ones who exclusively reported the uh, story of the APC National Convention not holding. So uh, they have this uh, kicker as exclusively reported by the by leadership in the headline APC National Convention would hold in February. Uh, and the following writers party shifts exercise to March 26 holds zonal congresses March 12. Stakeholders kick as professionals back Buni led caretaker committee. More headlines on the front page of the leadership newspaper electoral bill. No cause for alarm, presidency. Um, I wonder if those alarm bills will go off anytime soon. Impeachment, Zamfara Deputy Governor shuns pro panel. It's going down really hot there in Zamfara State. New NNPC charges may trigger increase in petrol price. We, we don't know what's going on. It's, I think a case of the more you look, the less you see. 15 million out-of-school children are potential terrorists of Obasanjo. 15 million out-of-school children are potential terrorists of Obasanjo. Interesting one there. Mother sells own baby for 120,000 naira in Adamawa. Lord have mercy. And uh, Oromoni, Lagos DPP's interim report indicted Doan College staff police. All right, um, it's an interesting one coming on the front page of leadership. But there's a, there's a picture there, I think, um, with some familiar faces. Mercy to you and I. Um, you have the governor of Cross River State, uh, Ben Ayade, deputy governor, and my former vice chancellor, Ivari Su, um, the commissioner for finance uh, in Cross River State. Some, some known faces, and um, this must have been the youth rally they had in Cross River State on the same day that uh, the PDP was scheduled to have its own. Um, rally at uh, in the same city of Calabar. That's uh, those are stories coming in the front page of the leadership newspaper. 
All right, away from the leadership newspaper this morning, we'll take a look at the Daily Trust. And on the Daily Trust, Boni Committee Dili Dallas on APC com Convention and uh, Exercise Fix for March 26. Yobe Governor, others want convention and primary same day. Ex-governors quoted on that. No ulterior motive in our decisions. All eyes on Buhari as he meets governors today. What Boko Haram told me in 2020, uh, 2011, uh, former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Olushagun Obasan, just quoted on that. And uh, just a quick one. He did mention that at the time he wanted to find out what the interest, apart from being interested in Sharia, uh, that they had mentioned that their followers had no job and then the government was gunning them down. And so that was also an issue. But he's constantly also talked about uh, the fact that people have had access to these weapons since after the civil war. And that has continued to threaten, uh, you know, our country. Federal government loses 3.6 trillion naira from delayed takeoff of e-customs, that's what reps quoted to say, and just before we move away, federal government projects ongoing despite Chinese loan delay, Lai Mohammed. Federal government project ongoing despite Chinese loans delay, Lai Mohammed uh, is quoted on that. How terrorists bombed NCDC, NSCDC commander, five orders in Niger. Presidency to critics, don't play politics with electoral bills. A uni just student accused of killing girlfriend turns death in court. This is some of the headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper. And we move straight to the nation newspaper uh, with these headlines. The uh, big one there, APC shifts convention to March 26 amid grumblings. It's interesting the paper uses the word grumblings. Um, governor's protests changed in definite postponement plan. And those are some of the... Uh, stories there on the front page some quotes um we have uh, we've agreed and approved that activities for the party's national convention will commence from february 24 and terminate on march 26 at eagle square only time will tell if the party can stick to what it says it will do um there's also a small matter of uh, zonal congresses of the party um that have not held or we're scheduled to hold um in March, and if you have not held your zonal congresses, can you go ahead and hold your national convention? These are the questions that uh, uh, the leadership of the APC will have to answer. More headlines coming on the front page of the nation. Government losing $8.8 .8 billion yearly to e-customs row. Government losing $8.8 .8 billion yearly to e-customs row. More loot refund coming from UK government. I wonder if Nigerians are concerned about that as they will be concerned about what happens to the, the, the refunded loot. Um, Ngige Asu meet over strike, all right? Uh, no love lost between those two. Let's see what comes out of that. Court declines Abakari's release request. Cop leads or pleads ill health. He says he's had diabetes and stuff. Uh, for some time don't take vp slot or hanese cautions Igbo politicians i uh, wonder if uh, uh, chris kende one who has a uh, did travel as nigerian will bet that no single uh, uh Igbo politician will, would hit that um, that 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 uh, that word of caution tinubu urges oyetola to be magnanimous in victory he wants him to draw those who lost um, to him closer uh, many feared dead in niger state explosion really sad electoral act don't rush buhari um this is um the special advisor to the president of media and publicity saying that eagles versus black stars tie shifted okorocha for court today um the man is is going through a lot to wish him the best uh mali janta sets five-year transition those guys are not ready to go away anytime soon we have um another one this is very important mercy uh the picture there has a headline worries over alarming sabotage of rail tracks worries over alarming sabotage of rail tracks and you can see a picture of some saboteurs some thieves basically these guys go around just basically uh, uh, stealing the metals and the steel um, on the rail tracks to sell it's really worrying and really sad Court throws out suit challenging articles of eligibility to run for president uh, as well. Those are some stories coming on the front page of the nation as well. We'll leave it at this point and quickly bring in our guest, uh, Chris Kende Wando, like we call him the, the tribalized Nigerian. Uh, Mr. Wando, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. 
Good morning once again. Thanks for having me. All right. Very quickly, um, for Ohanese telling um, Igbo politicians not to take any VP slot, are you confident that no Igbo politician will take a VP slot simply because Ohanese in Igbo has said so? Okay, are you asking me because I'm an Igbo man? You are not just an Igbo man. You are you are you are also a Yoruba man and a detribalized de de Nigerian. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we can't ignore the Kenya uh, name. Yes. <laughs> well, um, to me, it's neither here nor there. Um, for me, service is service. At any given point in time, when you are called upon to serve in any capacity, you should be able to do your best, whether as a president, whether as a vice president, whether as a speaker. Or or uh, even senior president, or even as a minister. So, for me, it's neither here nor there. Uh, yes, there is this agitation that the South is, um, for one, deserve to have a shot at the presidency and come 2023. And um, there's a need for the major political parties to give the South a, a, an opportunity to do that. Um, and I've always said that um, the presidency is not something that's just dropped on your laps. You don't just sit at home and wait for uh, the president to be dropped on your lap. You have to do a lot. You have to convince Nigerians from across all regions to be able to support your candidate and give them the reason why they want to support it. So you don't just say that, uh, give us the president, you want the president. It doesn't work that way. You have to work for it and you have to convince every session of Nigeria on the need to give you um, that. And also be able to bring uh, on board people that you think they have the capacity because it is going to be is a competition. Um, and most often, the Nigerians will always go for the best, want to go for the best. So uh, you always have to bring your first 11. Your first 11 must be able to play 90 minutes nonstop in order to be able to deliver uh, the trophy to you. So the, um, the advice by Ohanes and Digo that uh, a, 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 a South East uh, candidate um, should uh, pick up the vice president uh, slot is neither here nor here. One, I have asked myself, what have the organizers done to be able to build capacity within the political parties? Because you can't just stand and look and say, give us it. You have to participate. If you are not participating and you are not within the mainstream of the political parties, then there's no way your candidate will be picked as a presidential candidate. So what they should be working now is be able to make sure that they bring forward the don't forget in the last dispensation, there were so many uh, South, Southern, uh, Southeasterners that I contested. Um, P2B was the vice president to Atiku Abubakar. Kingsley Mohalo was the presidential candidate of one of the political parties. So how come that uh, he didn't get it? So I, I will still restrict myself to believing that there is the need for the Ohanians and and the people of the Southeast from which I come from. They have a lot to do to be able to convince Nigerians. We have the people. We have the people to do the job. And I believe that given the opportunity, they can do it. But they shouldn't just sit down in their bedrooms and be issuing um, uh, warnings and the rest of them. They need to go out. By now, I expect the organization to have started moving around the southwest, south, south, the north, and everywhere, and trying to convince other regions on the reason why they believe that their son should be given the ticket and be able to put it, should be voted for. And not just sit down and issue questions. But, but, but there's That's a sum or... Oha Bumwa, if I'm correct, uh, want Samuel? Yes, Samuel Bumwa. Yes. yes. He's, he's from the, the particular region, and so far we have been seeing his movement, you know, across the country. Also, what Rocha Sokrosa is also from the Southeast. That's why I'm saying that we have enough candidates, so many candidates from the Southeast that uh, want it back. What I'm saying in essence is that Ohanes and Dibo cannot just sit down in uh, in Southeast or in Enugu or wherever they have their head office and be issued it. By now, they should be moving around okay. and trying to go. I expect to see them in Sokoto, going to see the various uh, political or uh, social or whatever leaders within those the north, try to sell their candidates. And they have to, what they have to do is that try as much as possible to narrow down the candidates to about two, so that Nigerians can have a choice. When you have a litany of so many people, then there's, a, 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 there's going to be a problem. So that is what I just say that I'd rather just issue press release and say that um, should you take off this or that. It's neither here nor there for me. All right, so let's take a look at the punch this morning. And uh, on the punch, the caption says, labor fumes as IMF wants federal government against fresh borrowings. And now for the consent of, you know, TUC, NLC, saying 
The government should do away with funds, advice, and loans. That's what they're telling the federal government. Don't listen to this institution. Don't borrow from them. Because uh, this, the IMF has also been concerned about uh, how Nigeria intends to you know, fund a subsidy. We're looking at 2.6 trillion naira. Messi, I'm sure you, you even yourself, you, 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 will, you will not believe uh, that the government will not will listen to them. Government will not listen. Government will borrow. This government has become a government of borrowing. And they'll find it in their way and in their gene that the only way they can be able to survive or be able to implement most of their, um, uh, most of the promises they made to Nigeria is the borrowing. The borrowing on it. You need to see our debt profile. You need to see our debt profile. From 19, 20, 2015 to date, you need to see the debt profile. It's running into trillions and trillions. And all these borrowings are no borrowings. This government is not to go, is not going to pay back. This government is living in the next one year. So they are borrowing for generations yet unborn. Our children may be the ones that will end up paying back this thing. And I've always said, first and foremost, let me also reiterate this fact that I have no problem with borrowing. If you borrow, the fact remains that what do you use the borrowing for? It has to be for capital projects. It has to be for projects that can be able to give back interest that for you to be able to pay back. Even the United States of America borrows. There is no country in the world that doesn't borrow. But the our own here is that what do we use it? Instead of using our for capital, we use it for recur recurrent. We use it to pay salaries. We have to use it to fuel um, government officials traveling across the globe. We used to pay uh, legislators aid. We used to pay civil servants and the rest of that. At the end of it, you come to realize we are practically done, it. except for one or two sectors, maybe you're looking at the rail, the rail, once in the while, the roads, and one or two other stuff. I don't see what they do, you use it for. And we have a, 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 a National Assembly that is so blue side, um, that has become a robust stamp. And they said, it, the senior president said it when he was inaugurated that whatever the president brings, that they go to. And there's no position to that. Whatever they bring, they just pass on and pass on. And that's it. So if labor like, let us guy from here to kingdom come. This government will not stop itself from borrowing. They will continue to borrow. But as rightly mentioned in the course of um, introduction, he who goes at borrowing, goes at sorrowing, will continue sorrowing if we continue to, because we are not being creative in what we need to do. Economically, well, but the NLC today. has actually not, you know, uh, provided an alternative. I mean, if you're saying that the federal government should not listen to the IMF and all of the uh, international financial institutions or borrow, then what are they offering? What, are, what, what other way are they asking the government to, you know, look towards? Let's say I'm a journalist. I'm not of, of NLC. I am speaking from the point of a journalist. And I'm saying the fact that as far as I'm concerned, we can be more creative economically. We can look at, uh, there are so many things that we can be able to. What the problem we've always had is that depending, our dependence of oil as only source of income. And that is where the problem is. So we're always held up within this with this, this way that once anything happens within the international market, the oil sector, then we, we run into trouble. What is happening to agriculture? May see a lot of money. Go and look at the, the, the top 10 billionaires, the high 10, top 10 richest men in the world. Do you know where they are in, where you find them? IT. IT is the way to go. That is where the countries are going. It's not all nobody. Messi in the next few in the next few years, so many countries are doing away with uh, oil. More vehicles are the main engine of oil. That's what you say. But most of them are going, most of these companies are going into electric uh, cars. Okay, Some of all them right. Are uh, uh, want to, let, let, let's move on to more stories from the national dailies because of time. Um, uh, all the papers have uh, a look at the the APC National Convention not holding anymore in February. Uh, I think the leadership newspaper is touting itself as the one who first reported or called this the the the, the shift in the convention. Your thoughts on that? Because uh, some are saying the party is confused, and um, uh, such a confused party may not be the right party to lead Nigeria into the future. Uh, there's a letter, apart from these headlines, a letter circulating uh, of uh, the notice for the conduct of zonal congresses, for instance. And um, someone is saying that uh, it's, it's shameful, you know, to fix a national convention without conducting zonal congresses, and then saying that the party now went to PMB to get its approval for a convention, knowing fully well that it's a by-election on the same day, only to then cancel again. What do you make of this, this uh, uh, inconsistency and um, sort of confusion as some have called it in the ruling of progressives congress that is what i call consistent inconsistency on the part of um, 
um, APC. This is the first time they are postponing their um, convention. Don't forget that um, this uh, convention was supposed to go on the 5th of February this year before they moved it. Yeah, some of us knew that it won't go. But let me, uh, uh, Kofi, let, the people have forgotten the fact that the current theatrical committee of uh, APC was selected to conduct the basic responsibility of this committee was to conduct this convention. That was where they were selected. But two years down the line, they have now taken up the position of National Executive Council or, or Committee of the APC. And the, the, the office, the, the office they, are, they are so comfortable running the APC. A situation where a sitting governor who's supposed to be sitting there in the state and running his state is not uh, jockating from one state to another and moving around the 36 state and, and, um, uh, and the FCT um, um, dealing with issues of APC rather than just being in the state and conducting the affairs of his state in the past two years is not... And for me, this is just the way the APC has run uh, its government since 2015. You can see the, 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 the junction between what they have rolled out and what they say and the rest of them. That is how they've been ruled. What stopped them from conducting it? Is it now you are knowing that you are supposed to conduct a zonal uh, congress before your uh, national convention and the rest of them? We have barely, they have barely one year. And why everybody's interested is because of the fact that APC is the ruling part. Whatever affects APC affects every aspect of Nigerian. Of, of Nigerian. So, um, whether I'm surprised that that convention won't go on Saturday, of course I know. The body language hasn't shown any they did not put anything in place. Don't forget that they said they want to meet the president. Um, unfortunately, the president jetted out to um, Europe and they just came back. They're meeting him today. What do they want the president to tell them when to hold the, um, the Congress? Is that the duty of the president? The president is the president. Of, once you're elected, you are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not the president of the peace. The president has gone beyond just being a factor. Yes, he may be said to be the leader of, of the party, but he has become a national figure. He's the president of Nigeria. He's our president. And I don't think it should be starting with the responsibility of All right. Uh, Chris, let, let's also take a look at another one. Uh, let's look at another story on the Punch newspaper. And this talks about a bill where the Senate is considering this bill seeking to prescribe punishment for family members confirmed to be beneficiaries or who have benefited from proceeds of corruption, especially by a civil or public servant. Do you think that this would help with the fight against corruption? I don't know how that will help because you say you prosecute the families. I wouldn't know. I've not read the story, so I, uh, I don't know. Beneficiaries. Have, I mean, the bill is seeking to say that if it becomes law, so if you have a public servant or a civil servant who has been found to be corrupt, and those who benefited from them would also be punished. At times, how do you know that the, whatever you're benefiting from is from corruption? <laughs> if you, yes, mercy. If I come to you now, I say, oh, Chris, my, my partner, please take this uh, one M and just take, uh, take enjoy yourself. Or that I have an issue, I have a problem. I, I walk to Kofi, I say, Kofi, as my partner, please, can you just give me some? And Kofi decides to just say, okay, see, send, you, send your back and card. And I just get an alert, a background, two million for Kofi, which I know he can always give me. Uh, and tomorrow, you not start prosecuting um, uh, Kofi um, for, for corruption. I know you are not coming to meet me. I say, oh, because I benefited from how on earth do I know that? Um, I don't think. I think we should our uh, our legislation. Should but but, but don't you think that this this bill is actually seeking to take corruption uh, to another level of being personified? I mean, individuals would now have to be querying, uh, you know, friends, cronies, and what have you about what they get. Messi, our problem is not law. We have enough law to deal with issue of corruption in Nigeria. We have EFCC. We have ICPC. We have even the, the police. We have the police. Uh, there's a fraud unit within the police. In, 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 there are so many laws. Our problem is not, they come up with all sorts of laws. Our problem has always been implementation and not happening. We have enough law with the, with the issue of corruption. That is not an issue. Uh, we, that is how they were going about the media bill and you know, bill and the rest of them. It is not, that is not the issue. My own, my, my own problem now is that how do you better the life of Nigerians? How do, you put, how do we put food on the table? How did the average Nigeria feel the effect of democracy? Most Nigerians have not felt the dividends of democracy from 1999 to date. And it's a fact. Because we have leaders who have their own selfish interests at heart, not the interests of the people they are represented. So when you are saying you are going about, yes, I don't see anything. 
if the law will be able to better that, fine, all well and good. But what I'm telling you in essence is that we have so many laws that, that, that handle issues of corruption and the rest of them. These guys, we always find ways of uh, subverting it. And that is the fact. If you do, most of those that have been arrested, what happened to them? They take them to God and they just get sand. We just get them out of the book, and that's just it. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Chris, Kendewado, let, let's look at uh, one issue that has been uh, a very, very important to Nigerians, and uh, the papers have given it uh, the needed coverage today. Uh, the leadership newspaper has its own version. We're talking about the Electoral Bill or the Electoral Act, whichever you choose to call it. Um, the leadership newspaper goes with this headline, Electoral Bill, no cause for alarm, presidency. Uh, the punch uh, goes with this particular headline, uh, gr Electoral Act, groups defy presidency, hold protests today. And that defy presidency is something we'll look at. We go with um, the, also go over to the, um, uh, the Guardian. He has his own take. Presidency warns against stampede, cheap politics over electoral bill. And that's the most interesting of the lot, I think. Uh, presidency warns against a stampede, cheap politics over electoral bill. And uh, just a few lines on that from The Guardian says the presidency yesterday urged Nigerians to re refrain uh, from stampeding and this is an interesting word, stampeding President Muhammad Buhari to assent to the new Electoral Act Amendment Bill, insisting the president has 30 days to look at the document. Uh, in a statement signed by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adation of the presidency said there was no need for a sable rattling uh, on the issue. It accused some interest groups of cashing in on what they consider a delay in signing of the electoral bill into law by the president to foment civil disorder and the muddy waters. Um, over to you, Chris Kennedy. One. We as Nigerians have the right to stand with the president. That's what we elected him. We have the right. It's our right. It's within our right. So nobody should tell us not to stand with him because we know the kind of president we have. If we don't stand with him, he will not do what he's supposed to. Do. Most often than not, he just go to the cooler. He say he takes his time in taking decision, and some of us cannot wait for him to take that to take his time to take that decision. Um, Kofi, let me tell you that the fact is that that electoral bill, art or whatever you call it, needs to be signed as quickly as possible because the INEC has a time frame to release timetable for 2023 election. It has a time frame. And it has been stated that, I, I don't know the sessions of those, uh, that uh, um, INEC um, act, that you have certain period within which you be able to make this. If you don't, that means if that time frame uh, elapses, then it becomes, it, it's possible that we can take you to court on it. So for us, I don't know what the president is going to do. He has read the bill. Is it just saying it today? He has read it before now. No, but he, not the same one that read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, well, well, for, for, for people who say, oh, um, um, you know, the, the, the INEC position, know that, you know, we need to, you, you use the word quickly or as soon as possible, the words. Um, but the presidency, through Femi Adesino, is saying, quote, people like you, that one can just pity their ignorance on constitutional requirements. So he, he's not talking about you, but you're talking about uh, the president doing this quickly. He's saying that people like you are ignorant about constitutional uh, uh, requirements, that the president has a 30 day window within which to sign the bill or decline to, um, to c commit his assent to that bill or his signature to that bill to use a green pen on that bill. So yeah, aren't you being, agree. like Femi Adesino says, uh, constitutionally I ignorant? Agree. Well, I agree, we are ignorant. Good. I, we are ignorant, we know nothing. They are, they are all knowing. You know they are all knowing. We, are, we know nothing. We are, we are very ignorant. Nigerians are ignorant. But let me tell you of the fact that whether 30 days or not 30 days, the president had 30 days when the initial bill was passed to him to be able to sign that. And he saw some flaws, according to him, why he couldn't sign it. I sent it back to the National Assembly. Must we wait for the 30 days for him to be able to sign it? That is what we're saying. Do you have to wait for it? You gave, you gave specific uh, instances what you wanted to, the National Assembly to do. You are talking of the issue of um, direct primary. That is what the president hammered uh, uh, his uh, argument on. And he wanted that to respond. And the National Assembly have done that. So I don't know which other area. Don't forget that also the ATF came out to say that we still going to look at the law as passed again. And if it's not in the best interest of Nigerians that he will advise the president but, 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 to sign. But he has 30 days. Now, what you're saying, according to the presidency, through federation, amounts to stampeding 
the president. You're trying to rush him into doing this. Um, whilst he's, he's within his rights, within the law, why not wait for the 30 days? We are still saying we are repeating the same thing, Kofi. The president had 30 days the first time it was passed. Don't forget, this is the third time that this bill is being passed to the president that he never signed. So Nigerians already know that there's possibility for the president not to sign. So there were reasons given why it was not signed in 2019. It was too close to the election, and Nigerians agree with it. What the, the basic fact is that, Kofi, we have elections coming up before 2020. There's going to be the Oshun election, and I think there's going to be another election in the heat, uh, if I'm not mistaken, before 2019. And I make have said that part of this um, bill, um, this um, law, is what we're going to use to implement. So it is not for us. It's INEC that's crying. It's not Nigerian that I, I, I actually crying. It's INEC, who, which I have said that, except this bill is signed into law, that his heart seems to be tied, that he cannot do anything. So we are urging the president, since we are very ignorant of the law and we don't know what we're talking about, we are urging the president to please sign this so that we can move on, as, so that INEC can start preparing for 2023. I don't think that is too much of them just asking the president to do. Well, well, the president has till, till March 1, um, if we're to look at the 30-day window. Let's see, let's see what happens within that time frame. All right, let, let's also take a look at what uh, the former president of the Federal Republic has talked about as regards security and Boko Haram. And some people will be surprised that, so we know the persons who are committing this crime. How come we haven't, I mean, as a government who has the apparatus, who has the powers, uh, what's going on? Is it bigger than the government? However, former president had said that, yes, he wanted to find out what has been going on. And that's on the Daily Trust uh, with Boko Haram. And then one of the concerns he found out that apart from being interested, he was told that uh, their followers had no jobs. And then, of course, government was coming at them. Uh, he also had mentioned, made reference to the fact that the access to weapons has also become a major issue since after the civil war, and that has constantly, you know, put us where we are now, uh, talking about insecurity. But I, I'd like to share your thoughts on this premise, what the former president said. Well, um, the former president, uh, 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 has a right to uh, what he said. Uh, and uh, I give it to him. Don't forget that he, he was a former general and uh, he has been a three time uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, anything coming from a person, I take seriously. So, because he'll be speaking from the point of strength and uh, knowledge. Uh, but we all know that yeah, poverty breeds uh, insecurity to a large extent. Um, but the fact remains that is it only in the north that we have poverty? There's poverty across the land. Um, in the south, west, in the southeast, south, south, and the rest of them. So anybody just uh, sitting down and says it's because of poverty that he, was, he went into crime and the rest of them. That to me is not it, it is not good enough. And um, also, um, come to look at it, the first remains that the issue we have now is much much bigger than most people believe, because it has taken an international dimension. Before it used to be a Boko Haram, now we're having Ashwab and the rest of them um, within the uh, within Nigeria attacking our uh, and the military, attacking um, civilians, attacking targets and the rest of them. Just yesterday, we had that a, a bomb went off in Niger State, and some uh, officers of one of the security agencies were killed. So many people have been killed and the rest of them. It's not just about um, 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 Boko Haram now, kidnapping. And of people have become a norm. We, we are seeing all sorts of um, killings going on in all parts of the world, especially in the north now. So um, I, I agree with the president. What I should be thinking is that the, president should, the former president should be giving solutions also. But we're talking about arms. Nigeria has one of the most porous borders in the world. So many. So even if you mind the borders, the major borders, there have been places where instances where these arms come in and rest of that, and it's very difficult to mop them up. But I believe that our security agencies will continue to do what they are doing, trying to take the war to the um, to the bandits and also to Boko Haram as it were, and making sure that this war against insecurity is well fought to a standstill. If we are not able to do that, then that becomes like that in itself was also there in the election coming in 2023. Don't forget that. Prior to 20, 2015, we have so many places in, in Bonu State and some other parts 
of that region. They were in the hands of um, uh, Boko Haram, and that led to postponement of the election for some weeks uh, before we had the election. And the election is coming now. If we don't be able to do that, then that means that some parts of Nigerians will be disfranchised during this period as well. All right, interesting uh, uh, thoughts and analysis there from you, Chris Kendi Wandu, our guest this morning. He's a public affairs analyst and he's joined us on Off the Press right here on The Breakfast. Thank you very much for your time, Chris, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice. Hopefully, by the time we have you next on um, the Electoral Act Amendment, we would have been, would have been signing. We all... And then we'd have listened to Ross. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Well, up next, let's look at what happened today um, in history, today being the uh, 22nd of February 2022. Um, we'll be right back on the other side to dive straight into our first major conversation.